people present are. We're being, thank you, Matthew. <laughs> um, so I was just introducing uh, the meeting, the licensing committee C. I'm Councillor David Gardner. I'm with Councillor Odette McGarkey and Councillor Pat Greenwell. And uh, we're um, conducting this hearing. Uh, I said I received no apologies for absence. I've not been notified of any urgent business. Um, does any members have any interest to declare? I see none. I hear none. Um, we've got minutes uh, from the previous meeting uh, in item four. Are they approved by members? Are they agreed? Good, thank you. I was there. They're fine. So item five, then moving on to substantive business, is the application from uh, TG Convenience Stores Limited, uh, Lakedale Service Station, uh, 190 214 Plumstead High Street, SE 18 1JH. So can I just check that the applicant's legal rep is here? Is that you, Sabrina? It is, yes. Thank you. Welcome. And you're alone today, are you? Um, well, uh, there is. There was a. Uh, my client was with me. I think I saw a comment before. Um, before we got oh, right. in, the lady's name's Trish. Okay, oh, we, yes. we we wanted to confirm that. Thank you very much for confirming yeah, thank that. Thank you for confirming. We weren't sure who Trish was. <laughs> so okay, thank you so much. We, we, we were right. asking her. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. Okay. Then. And is is Trish going to speak as well, or there to answer questions? Just to answer questions. Lovely. Thank you. Um, and. Um, making uh, representations we've got uh, on the application. We've got Robert Pynchon. And you're with us, Robert. I can't see you, but you're there. Are you Mr. Pynchon? Good morning. Yes, Councillor Gardner. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, good. Um, this, can I confirm that all parties have received a link to the agenda pack? Uh, if not, do speak now. All silence. Good. So can I draw all parties' attention to the 15-minute time limit set down in our policy? Can I ask that those making representations keep to the points made in the written representation, so you shouldn't introduce new evidence, and all issues raised should be relevant to the licensing objectives and not to repeat anything anyone else has said. Um, please uh, then can I ask the licensing officer, Steve Cox, to give an outline summary of the report and then there'll be an opportunity for members to ask questions uh, to that report. Steve, over to you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and thanks for confirming that all parties have already seen the report and Appendices A to E and have had the opportunity to consider them. The application before you today is for the variation of a premises licence for TG Convenience Store, which is a four-court shop at Lakedale Texaco Service Station 190 to 214 Plumstead High Street, London SE 181 JH, relating to an increase in the existing hours for the off sale of alcohol. I shall now give details regarding the history, nature, and location of the premises before moving on to a short PowerPoint presentation. The details of the application that the subcommittee is being asked to consider is to vary the licence as follows. Its current hours for off sale and supply of alcohol are daily from 6am until midnight. And there is a second licence uh, uh, activity, uh, late night refreshment, the provision of hot food and or hot, hot drink after 11pm, which operates for the maximum LNR period of 2300 until each following 0500 daily. The proposed variation is for the off sale of alcohol to run midnight to midnight, i.e. 24 hours a day, which would be an increase of six hours daily between midnight and 6am, for which they're not currently licensed for that activity. It is proposed that there be no change to late night refreshment, nor any change to any of the existing conditions on the premises licence. Uh, which can be found at Appendix B uh, of the report. Uh, the application was received on the 18th of March 2024 and the last date of representations was the 16th of April. The application has been correctly advertised uh, as required by the Licensing Act uh, by notices of application displayed at the site of the premises for 28 days and advertised in the local press. 
in line with usual practice, a licensing officer, or namely myself, uh, visited the premises on the 20th of March and confirmed that the statutory notices of application were displayed correctly, with copies both at the forecourt shop premises and where the forecourt itself abuts the high street. Um, aside from the current licence being attached at Appendix B, details of it can be found at Section 2 of the report. It was granted uh, on the 20th of September 2019, and at the time of grant, the premises operated under the SO brand. The premises has uh, historically operated as a petrol service station uh, and currently operates as Texaco. It has been licensed uh, since, as I say, uh, 20th, uh, September 2019. And aside from alcohol, the forecourt shop also offers a variety of food, soft drinks, household items and motorists' goods. Uh, there have been no formal complaints received about the premises uh, operation by the Royal Borough of Greenwich Community Protection Team, who deal with noise complaints, uh, and therefore no requests for an environmental health officer to attend in line with their call-out service to assess levels of noise uh, as determined within the statutory nuisance criteria of the Environmental Protection Act 1990. The premises are in Plumstead High Street, approximately 0.2 of a mile east of Lakedale Road Fire Station and is next door to Plumstead Police Station, separated by Riverdale Road, um, opposite, sort of diagonally opposite as the upcoming PowerPoint will show, is Bannockburn Primary School. Um, the objector's residence is on one of the streets behind the school. The premises are located within the Plumstead High Street Cumulative Impact Zone as prescribed by the Royal Borough of Greenwich licensing policy. And there is a map of the area uh, at Appendix C uh, to the report with the premises cross hatched. Uh, within sections 3.3, 3.4 and 3.5 uh, of the committee report, uh, there is full detail of all the other licensed premises uh, along the length of Plumstead High Street. Uh, variously for on sales, on and off sales, and solely late night refreshment. Uh, and there is one uh, representation from Mr. Robert Pynchon, local resident, uh, that has been uh, lodged in line with the Prevention Acquirement Disorder, Prevention of Public Nuisance, and Public Safety licensing objectives, and that can be found at Appendix D. Um, of the responsible authorities consulted, Environmental Health Community Protection Team and the commercial team both formally confirmed they had no representations to make. Uh, a representative from Greenwich Police Licensing verbally stated to the author of this report that after due consideration they had no representations either, but did not confirm this in writing, and the remaining responsible authorities did not respond at all. But Appendix E, you will see uh, email communication between uh, Ms. Cader's colleague, Mr. Robert Botkai, and Mr. Pynchon. And I'll now move on to the PowerPoint presentation. You could assist with that, please, Matthew. Hello, can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay. Not, yeah, that's okay. If you could start the, the slides. Um, Steve, is everything okay? Oh, are you sharing it with me to okay? I thought you were moving the slides for me, Matthew. Yeah, I'm moving it, so I'm just okay. Yeah, it. if you could, it's not full screen as I'm looking at it. I don't know if it is for the others present. Is it full screen for the others? It's it's fine. We can we we can see it. We've we've got the sidebar with all the yeah. slides on, but it, it's yeah, fine. It, yeah, it's not it's not full screen now. Can you full screen it, Matthew, please? It's yeah. 
Is it okay now? Hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. Matthew, there's a um, thing at the bottom right-hand corner that you need to click on for the slideshow. Uh, thank, thanks, Mr. Pinch. And I, I think <laughs> best best not to intervene at this point. I have a re there should be a... I can't see because I've got your face in the way, but... There, there, there should be an icon at the uh, bottom on the bottom right to press to make it full screen. Hold on. Or you can use the view. Yeah, uh, I have given you access to be able to share as well. So you see, you. you can. I, I haven't got access. I'm just viewing your screen, Matthew. Um, let's start again. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes, but it's not full screen. You can just just a bit of advice here. What you can do, I've just done, is you can pinch out, and uh, it will. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that okay? It's made no difference at my on my screen, Matthew. I, I don't. Are you, are you not able to just enlarge it so it takes the whole screen up? It's usually not a difficulty with these presentations. Don't know what the issue is here. It's weird. I'm just. It's basically. The, I'm. I'm working because I'm. I'm working from home today. I'm using on the laptop, so it's kind of different. Okay. Well, if we can't enlarge it any bigger, we'll have to use this. But it's a. It's obviously better if it can be full screen, please. Is it better now? Because on my on my screen, I have the full screen showing. Okay. Yeah, we don't. But, but we I, don't. But I just I think it's we just carry on. Um, yeah, we better carry on. I think Matthew, yeah. please, for the yeah. delay proceedings. Okay. So if you could go to the next slide. On the next slide. Yes, please. We go to the next slide beyond the the title plate. Yeah, I'm on the next slide right now. No, that's the title page. No, it's the title page. Do you, do you want to share the screen with me and I'll see if I can do it from this end? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I've done it now. See if you have access. I don't, Matthew. No, I don't know what the problem is. Sorry. Yeah, so I've given all participants, those who can share, it's all participants, so you have access now. I haven't got it on my screen, Matthew, to be able to move it forward. I think we better go back to you, you yeah. having it and just moving the slides, Matthew. Yeah, that, that's, I don't that, 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 that's, that's, that's come out. Screen. Yeah, that's that's worked at last. If you, yeah, that's a full screen. If, if you could go to the, the next slide, please. Yeah, I've gone to the next that's slide. That's it. That's okay. it. Thank you. Okay, sure.
uh, with apologies for all that, everybody. This is um, this uh, photograph shows the entrance to TG Convenience Store, which is situated at the rear of the service station forecourt. Next. Um, this is a notification that's displayed on the store entrance, and it's one of five that was located um, throughout the footprints of the service station. This is the interior of the store, which is viewed from the entrance and looks towards the till and service counter area. This is the beer, uh, et cetera, and uh, wine chiller display, which is to the right of the till and service counter as a customer would stand in front of it. Uh, this is a view in the reverse direction from the till counter towards the entrance way with the alcohol chiller to the left. And this is a view from the entrance out into the service station forecourt and Plumstead High Street beyond. Uh, there's an example of another notice of application there, inward facing. Uh, this is the frontage <laughs> at the rear of the forecourt, which as you will see is currently trading under the cost cutter brand. The arrow indicates the night pay hatch through which sales of all store goods are transacted between midnight and 6 a.m. And this is uh, a condition of the current premises license um, held by TG Convenience Stores Limited. It features at uh, Annex 2, Condition 6. This is a close-up of the night pay hatch through which said transactions are made. Another notice of application displayed there. This is a view from the edge of the um, service station forecourt looking directly across Plumstead High Street. And this is uh, from the forecourt's edge towards Bannockburn Primary School, uh, which is uh, more or less opposite, sort of diagonally opposite uh, to the left. And this is a view from the other side of the road back towards the service station, and you can see the store at the rear. Um, yet another application notice. This is the one that was on the uh, the pavement at the very front of the forecourt, so that the application wasn't reliant just on notices on the store itself. Okay, Matthew, thank you. Uh, this is a, a view, a, again, from opposite the premises, west along Plumstead High Street towards Woolwich, and the school there is just on the right, you can see. In the other direction, east uh, towards Abbey Wood, the, the large brick building you can see there on the right is Plumstead Police Station, which is separated from the Kirtledge of the service station by Riverdale Road. This is a closer view of the uh, forecall and the store, and you can see in the background there the um, uh, police station. Uh, vehicular access to the forecall is on the left and egress on the right. Uh, this is a map of the local area, and the house icon you can see there is a general indication of the objector's vicinity to the premises. And lastly, um, the same shot, but as a, an aerial photographic view. Uh, thank you, Matthew. That concludes the PowerPoint presentation and indeed my presentation. Is there is anything further that I can assist the committee with? Thank you, uh, Steve. You're um, welcome. <laughs> do uh, members of the uh, committee have any um, questions to the licensing officer? No. Could I ask just if you could just explain to us the policy impact of the community of impact zone the, um, and how the community community of impact zone is meant to, um, you know, meant to operate. 
in, in general terms, it doesn't it doesn't pre prevent. Uh, is this a Camel? Do, do you wish to answer? Sorry, I don't wish to interrupt yeah. you. Chair, I can advise when you're deliberating, but you know, it, uh, the general principle is that uh, the application mustn't have an adverse impact on the full licensing objectives. Hmm. Which would be the same as, which would be the same as any application that wasn't a community of impact zone. It, it, it doesn't preclude any any existing li uh, uh, license holder from seeking to vary uh, terms, nor does it preclude yeah. any new applicant from making mm. an application. Yeah, I can advise if you want to pause the meeting and put over on our site side and waiting room, mm. or we can okay. do a collaboration. Right. Um, okay, then. Well, thank you very much, Steve. There are no further questions. Thank you. Um, and uh, we'll move on then. Uh, in the agenda. Um, just going to share do, 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 do. Uh, right. Um, so we now um, move on to the applicant. And uh, Sabrina, you're going to uh, make the case, are you, for the application? I am, yes. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, um, so uh, up to 15 minutes then. Thank you. Um, I had noticed Mr. Pynchon had his hand up. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, or whether I'll just carry on. Uh, well, unless it was an urgent matter, normally we wouldn't take questions from either the applicant or any objectors at this stage to the presentation. He'll have his chance to put his... Uh, views later. We do the, the the way we do these hearings. I'm sure you've done many, Sabrina. Is we don't have cross examination as such, but members may ask questions. Um, okay. So we'll have an opportunity to ask you questions when you've finished, or, or or indeed Trish, welcome Trish. And then when Mr. Pincham's made his representations, uh, we'll have a chance, obviously, to ask him. Um, but uh, you may, uh, in in your um, statement, you might wish to. Um, reflect on Mr. Pynchon's um, written uh, representation, which you have in front of you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. OK, um, as you've heard, this is an application to vary an existing premises licence for the petrol station at 190 to 214 Plumstead High Street. You've seen the photographs. Um, the applicant is TG Convenience Stores. It has over 100 um, premises around the UK, most of which, I think, are three are licensed premises. Um, as you've seen, this is a Texaco um, petrol station with a cost cutter um, branded store. Um, so, so Trish is here today. If you have any uh, sort of operational questions with the way TG convenience work. Um, so if you'd like to ask us some questions at the end, then that would be useful. Um, as you've heard from Mr. Cox, uh, there is an existing uh, premises license in place for the forecourt, it allows uh, for the sale of alcohol between the hours of 6am and 12 midnight, seven days a week. Um, TG Convenience did apply to vary the licence a few years ago, um, and that application was to allow for the sale of alcohol up until 2am. But following um, discussions with the police licensing officer at the time, it was agreed that we would restrict it to 12 midnight to see how we got on. Um, and together with that, what we did was we agreed a set of um, rather robust conditions that were attached to the licence. And those are the conditions that you um, see on the licence today and that Mr Cox um, briefly mentioned. Two important ones are that there is um, to be no sale of beer, a lager or cider above 5.5% ABV unless we agree expressly in writing with the police licensing officer. And the second is that the... Um, front doors to the forecourt should be closed um, between the hours of midnight and 6am and all um, sales made through the night hatch window that you saw on the slideshow there. Um, we, we haven't offered any other con um, conditions as part of this application because we see that the conditions attached to the current licence are so robust and we we're agreed with the police um, in the last few years. Um, as you said, um, as you've heard, the application is to extend to vary the licensing hours to allow for the sale of alcohol between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. Uh, the rationale behind the application is simply that the the forecourt store it operates at the moment 24 hours a day. It is open um, just between those hours at the moment. No sales of alcohol are made. Um, the applicant is simply looking to mirror the trading hours um, with the 
the licensing hours, I should say, with the trading hours that are currently in place. As, as you heard from Mr Cox, there have been no representations from any of the responsible authorities, um, including the police. It, it, and that's despite the you know police station being right next door to this forecourt. Um, it's equally important to note that there have been no formal complaints received by either the noise team or environmental health and no visits by environmental health to this particular store. Um, you have received um, a, a representation from, from Mr Pynchon, who is a resident in the borough. He, he raises a number of points relating to crime disorder, prevention of um, noise and public safety. And I'll just go uh, um, go a few, through a few of those and address a couple of the points that Mr Pynchon raises. Um, firstly, he refers to um, if the application was granted to the premises beca becoming a focal point for large groups to congregate um, and create disorder and crime and nuisance. You know, as you saw in the um, in the slideshow, the premises and uh, right next to the petrol station. Um, had we ex had we um, the premises been experiencing crime disorder to date, we would have expected um, the police to make a uh, formal representation. In fact, Mr. Cox said he had spoken to the licensing officer, and they, although it didn't confirm in writing, they had no objection to the application. And, and I think we, we'd say because the petrol station is there, the fact that it's there, it does actually act as a deterrent for these large groups to gather because it, it, you know, it's easy for the police to see them if they are there. Um, Mr. Pynchon raises uh, the fact that or acknowledges that the, the CIZ uh, talks about a density of licensed premises um, in the area. But given the location of this particular uh, store on the Plumstead High Street and bearing in mind the hours that we talk about um, as part of this variation, it's rather unlikely um, that there will be a density issue um, at, at, at the relevant times um, as if this application was granted. Um, Mr. Pynchon talks about strain on local enforcement uh, resources. Um, you know, I, I say it again, but there's been no representations from the local authorities suggest that there, there will be a strain or that, that there are any particular issues with this application that would lead to a strain on those resources. Equally, he talks about increased noise. Um, I say the premises are trading 24 seven. They have been for a number of years now. We've had no formal um, complaints from noise. Um, we, and we don't expect the sort of the football, the um, in, there'd be a large increase in the sales, um, the alcohol sales, if this application was granted. As I say, it's the, the application is simply to allow the applicant to provide a full service to customers. The store's open 24-7, the premises are lit 24-7 and they're staffed 24-7. It is just to add that full service and, and allow customers that want to purchase alcohol during their, those hours to do so. And so to do so through that, that night hatch pay window. Um, Mr Pynchon talks about the impact on other local businesses, um, which is unfortunately not a uh, a relevant factor for this um, license application. Um, he also talks uh, about, and, and I think as part of the papers has produced some crime um, data for the local area in Plumstead High Street, that so there's nothing in there that attributes any of the crime and disorder to these particular premises. The section 182 guidance um, provides that it's the police that you are your experts and that should be advising you on crime and disorder and say they haven't put in a representation or made any comment against this application to suggest that um, there is crime disorder from these particular premises or that the grant of this application would increase or lead to crime and disorder emanating from these particular premises. Um, uh, Trish has, has, um, has myself spoken to the um, the premises. We've spoken to the manager. Um, we, we're not aware of any complaints from officers in recent years um, since the uh, license has been in place. The store does suffer from complaints. We've had a look at them. There have been seven complaints over the last five years, but the complaints have surrounded um, the air to the tyre machine not working or um, someone receiving a parking fine because they stayed on the forecourt for too long. Nothing from the sale of alcohol. Um, there's been, we've not witnessed any particular crime or disorder on the premises or around the premises, nor have we witnessed any gathering of youth around the premises. Um, the, 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 I should say, store is open. We, we sell um, late night refreshment between um, 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. And again, with, there's been no issues with that um, over the last few years that, that we've been made aware of. Um, as you know, the, the the store is within the CIZ um, that the borough has, um, and uh, your policy at paragraph 11.10 states that the 
um, the adoption of a CIZ doesn't relieve the responsible authorities or any other person of the need to make a relevant uh, objection. There is no sort of automatic presumption of refusal because a CIZ in is in place. The re responsible authorities have to make objections um, in respect to the licensing objectives if they think there's going to be an impact from the grant of the application. Let's say we haven't had any of those in respect of this application. Um, I think your policy goes on to say that, um, with regard to the CIZ, that it, it shouldn't be used to refuse any applications to vary existing premises licences, and except if the, if there's a direct correlation to the impact, I'm oh, sorry, on the cumulative impact policy, which again, there's no evidence before you to suggest that there is. Um, and finally, in, in terms of your policy, there is a, um, a paragraph 12.2 uh, of your policy. It states that shops and supermarkets and stores um, like this one, it should be permitted to sell al uh, alcohol for consumption off the premises that mirror the trading hours of the store. And, and that's simply all we, we, we're looking to do today. Um, so just to sum up, um, say there's nothing for you, no evidence to suggest that there's any particular problem that undermines the licensing objectives from this particular store. Um, we don't expect that to change. If it did, um, you, we have a very responsible um, store manager there that we would invite the responsible authorities or the residents to go in and see if there are any issues that arise from this particular store to talk to them. Trish is available again if if there are any issues that we you, the we'd uh, you know welcome the residents coming to us to talk to us about um, um as, as external solicitors we're here as well but even if or or after all that there's still issues with the store there is the ability to review a license under the licensing act the applicant has never had a um, license review of any of its premises and it would very much hope that it doesn't have one in the future it, it does take uh, the concerns of residents very seriously it is part of the local community and it wants to continue to be part of that community as i say um we haven't offered conditions as part of this application because we do consider that there is a robust set of conditions on the license if the if the committee are minded to um add conditions or modify any of the conditions, I, I would ask that um, you allow me to readdress you in respect of those. But unless you've got any other questions, um, that's my submission for today. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sabrina. Do, uh, do colleagues have, uh, colleague members have any questions? Councillor Greenwell. You're on silent, Pat. Pat, you're muted. Oh. Pat, we can't hear your question because you're on mute. Oh. Well, Pat, do you think you could you could unmute your um yourself so we can hear your question? Chair, I don't know if Matthew has some uh, control. He can unmute um, Councillor Greenwell. Is that better? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Hello? If you'd like to just uh, repeat the question so we can hear it. Thank you. Oh. We can hear you. Um. Yeah. Just, just, just like to give, give your question again. That'll be great. Thank you. Oh. Are you all right, Pat? No, I've lost. We we can hear I've you. Lost it. Uh... We can hear you.
while you're um while you're trying to find your um get get your device working properly we we can hear you Pat, yeah, but obviously you can't hear us so while you're trying to do that uh i'll, I'll ask a question um of, of sabrina and trish and just to say um whether you've witnessed particularly trish obviously because sabrina you're not on site as it were but uh, have you witnessed any anti so I mean, mr pynchon refers to quite a degree of antisocial behavior uh, in the vicinity, so not actually talking about in your shop or on the forecourt, but in the vicinity, have you noticed much antisocial mm -hmm. behaviour in your in your time at the garage? Right. Yes, good morning, uh, Councillor. Um, I have spoken to the DPS at length about this, and um, he says that he has never, since he's been at that site, which has been the last six years that we've known him, um, he has never seen any antisocial behaviour at all. No gatherings. Mm, mm. And could I ask, Camel Jit might tell me this is not pertinent, but can I ask, to what extent do you feel, um, given obviously petrol and or hydrocarbon garages are in long-term decline as people use cars less and and they move to electric cars, those that do use cars, um, I wondered to what extent your patronage at the store is um, is walking, and to what extent it's uh, driving. So I, I I think to be honest, that it's about fifty fifty. Right. And with the purchase of people purchasing alcohol. Do they tend to be, is that also about 50-50 between motorists and uh, people that come on foot or by bike? Uh, I'm not sure of that, to be honest. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we've lost Councillor Greenwell. Um, we will um, make sure she's appraised of the question, the answer to the question. Um, but uh, without, so not delay much longer, ask Councillor McGarhy to put her question. Thank you. Odette. Hello, thank you very much for that. Um, can I just clarify? Uh, I seem to recall when I visited one of the stations on Plumstead High Street, that there's a, like a laundry facility actually in the garage. Is that your garage? Yes, it is. So do when people are doing their laundry at the garage, do they spend time waiting there? How long does it take to wash and dry your clothing? Um, well, normally they don't they don't wait. They go away and leave it because it takes uh, approximately an hour or so, or if not longer, to, to fully dry it, depending on um whether it's you know like the thick curtains or duvets because they're industrial washers and dryers so it does take quite some time so they normally wash it in go off come back later so you don't have like a, a waiting space for them while they're there there's no, no drinking there no no thank you so just to uh, your back councillor greenwell just to update you that while you uh, while we lost you uh, I asked a question about the uh, the, the, the uh, split, the modal split of footfall to the store, which Trish thought was about 50, 50, 50 percent uh, by vehicle, 50 percent people not coming by vehicle, so presumably mainly by foot. And um, and and Adette asked a question about the laundry at the back. Um, there is a laundry at the back of the garage as well, which she knew about. So Pat. Before we lost you, you were trying to ask a question. And do you want to put that question again? You'll need to come off mute. Sorry. One of the, can you hear me now? One of them you was can. about the footfall, which you, you've already, that was the main one about the footfall, about the people going along uh, by traffic and, and people just wandering in. Can I just ask also, um, what about... At the moment, you're, you're saying that you've got 24-hour food delivery and that you've got also a, a hatch. So is that hatch 
used for the food deliveries as well? Or is there a separate door for the food deliveries? And also, what about Uber deliveries? Do they use your the facilities? Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave, leave Trish. Can I just ask about the food deliveries? Are you are you sort of food, food to stock up the store? I, I mean, you're the refreshments. Are they people who are coming at the moment, 24 hours? Are they using the, um, to get the food? Are they using the store main entrance? Or no. are they using the hatch? Between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., they're using the hatch. We close the doors completely and they use the okay. hatch. Yeah. Trish, do you right. want to about Uber? So I'm not quite yes. sure. Yes. Yes. I was wondering if you have many Uber deliveries. Um, yes, we do. Um... And they, when they collect their deliveries to take out to the sites, then they use the night hatch as well. Um, and so has there been any, how many Uber deliveries would you say that you are getting at the moment? Is that on an average? Um, night? Very few, to be fair very few i would say absolute maximum five five okay. and trish just to be just to be clear you know, your late like refreshment though is limited hot, hot hot drinks isn't it you don't actually right. offer hot food do you That's correct. no okay it's just hot drinks it's just okay. hot drinks yeah yeah thank you trisha thank you thank you thank, thank you chair you. sorry about before that's right are there any uh further questions to uh sabrina or trish on the application. No? Well, thank you very much uh, for your um, time and presentation. So we'll move on now to the objector, Mr. Pynchon. Uh, so we, again, 15 uh, minutes, Mr. Pynchon, if you'd like to um, expand on the uh, written presentation you made and obviously respond to uh, any points that you felt relevant uh, from the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so first of all, um, having an alcohol license is a privilege. Um, this is not an objection to the current operations uh, of the applicant being dutiful within their current uh, operational hours, uh, which is expected from a responsible licensee. The success of the Plumstead cumulative impact zone is most evident by the lack of negative data and no other representations by responsible authorities to this licensing panel. The effects of alcohol uh, within this local community of Plumstead was acknowledged at the instigation and evidential reporting by the local authority to implement this cumulative impact zone. I was not privy to any of that data before. I didn't live in this uh, area at that time. Whether those arguments are still valid for the continuation of the cumulative impact zone and the impact on the applicant here today is up to the licensing committee to decide. The reason why and I, I don't like the word objection. What I wanted was a discussion to ensure that there is a fair appraisal of this application for variation and the impact and benefit to the local community. The cumulative impact zone recognizes um, the amount of premises that are able to operate within that zone who have the alcohol license. We, I, I'm not an expert on public health and they're not here to represent, uh, to make any representations. So I, as with the police data, I can only use what I've got available publicly. And that is sadly lacking in specific to this premises. So I have to make my objection in, for want of a better word, with regards to the data available of the local community within this cumulative impact zone. The peace and serenity and tranquility of being a resident within this area has 
been a benefit to me once I finish work, I can enjoy the local environment. Sadly, unfortunately, there are some people in the local community who do not consume alcohol responsibly. And as a resident, I expect my council to ensure that my environment that I live in and work in is safe and I have no nuisance that disturbs my peaceful life. But that, I understand, isn't at detriment to the fair profitability of premises who are able to supply such age-restricted products within that community. One of the sadly lacking things um, that uh, I found during this session uh, is no reference to the Section 176 Licensing Act requirements that this premises is not just an off license, it is a petrol station. Today, the applicant has failed to present to date any data to support this variation application. And in fact, um, there is no specifics here to be able, I think, to accurately determine their viability for the license. So I would, I would suggest that they, the licensing committee make a, 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 an order for the applicant to present that financial evidence and data to ensure their continued viability to hold an alcohol license. Going to the public safety element. Now, I'm not an expert in the Licensing Act. Uh, I'm, I, I've just picked it up relatively recently. So I have to defer that to more esteemed colleagues. Um, however, only on Friday at the West End End of the cumulative impact zone, there were four marked police cars, one unmarked police car and a police van who attended a premises because of some presumably act of uh, violence that was occurring to, to warrant such a response. I witnessed this at uh, 10 to 11 on Friday night whilst I was traveling on a bus. So I have no other further information. So uh, Mr. Cox, the licensing officer may well be able to provide that uh, in your discussion sessions later on. So for me, this evidence that the local community that are using this area, unfortunately still have an impact. And, and I do appreciate that this applicant will be then impacted by that um, uh, being present within the cumulative impact zone. So the, the, the reason for um, my representation was to ensure that you councillors are given sufficient time and evidence to make the proper decisions and fair decisions. That's all I'm asking for with all of those considerations in place. At this time, personally, I don't think you have sufficient evidence to make that decision, but that's up to you. Um, increasing the hours for the applicant during this period of time from midnight to 6 a.m. For me, increasing the availability of alcohol to the local community is only going to exacerbate any issues that are identified within a cumulative impact zone. So this comes to the absolute core for me of what the cumulative impact zone is being implemented for. If, if it's not needed, if you are going to uh, start uh, approving extensions of these um, hours for the availability of alcohol, then um, it, 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 it would question, I would question, if I was a trader within this zone, why is it not being uh, rel relinquished for me if I'm a responsible trader? Um, again, the data 
hasn't been supplied from Mr. Cox as to any other premises within that cumulative impact zone to justify any any such decision. Granted, um, uh, Ms. Cada has uh, said no complaints have been uh, represented um, uh, regarding this particular applicant. So again, the objection is not against this particular applicant. It's about the due consideration that needs to be made with regards to the impact and the benefit to the local community on this particular variation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pynchon. Uh, maybe you will we'll have some questions, so maybe you could um, stay on the screen if that's possible. Um, thank you. Uh, so I, I've just been uh, looking at this. So under um, policy 11.7 of the uh, Gr Greenwich Licensing Policy, um, it's up to the applicant uh, to demonstrate why the grant or variation involved will not add to the cumulative impact experienced. But you mentioned financial data. I don't see how financial data is, is relevant. I wonder if you could perhaps guide us as to where financial data would be relevant. That would be a commercial issue, not, um, not, a, not an issue in terms of licensing objectives. Uh, yes, I completely agree on that. Uh, um, uh, but I would actually defer to the experts in the room. That's mm. from Jit Jandu and Steve Cox with regards to the implications of 176 of the Licensing Act. But that might be a consideration for you in your discussions yeah. outside of this. Or yeah. even um, Sabrina Caden might have more expertise on this than me. Right. Well, we can uh, we can later open up to uh, ask these questions of Sabrina as well, to be fair. Uh, but uh, at the moment, could I just ask you about the um, the, the, the sort of antisocial behaviour and the impact of alcohol in in in, in Plumstead? Uh, from your experience as a resident there, um, do you I mean where where in where along the high street do you see um, those issues of antisocial behaviour and right. that might be related to alcohol? Yes, no, absolutely. Um, so uh, with regards to the public nuisance side, um, there is a lot of littering, uh, particularly of alcoholic products along the high street. Obviously, this can't be uh, specifically determined uh, specifically to uh, the applicant's premises, but it exists. And that's why the cumulative impact zone does exist. Um, so there's the rubbish of, of that the potential dangers for uh, off-licensed products such as glass bottles. Um, there are, unfortunately, at certain times along Plumstead High Street, individuals who do exhibit um, uh, drunken behaviour, um, but not of, I would say, the threshold that um, is arrestable. Um, however, I, I note that um, the licensing policy for the Royal Borough of Greenwich is there to promote the nighttime econ economy, and I completely understand that. We, I want a flourishing community, but what it specifically says within your policy is about promoting family lifetime nighttime economy. It doesn't talk specifically, or at least I, I'm not so familiar and given the fact that this um, application for variation was made during the Easter holidays um, and also the pre-election period, I couldn't get answers from my local councillors uh, during that period uh, to determine any other information. Um, so the experience I've had is um, general behaviour, which whilst my um, uh, standards of alcohol consumption might be particularly higher and measured because I have uh, responsibilities um, that um, would be impacted if I got arrested. Um, so there are, I wouldn't consume as much alcohol as maybe certain other people within the local community here would be. I see, Robert, that Steve wants to come in. Thank you. 
uh, Chair. Uh, it, it was just to address two very quickly and in a manner that I hope will help the committee. Two points Mr Pynchon raised. Firstly, to do with the incident he saw with the marked and unmarked police vehicles that he witnessed from the bus. He, he suggested that I might know what that's about. I have no idea whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, um, and there's no reason I should have, is there really, to I may answer a question with a question. But uh, pertaining, uh, moving on and pertaining to section 176 of the Licensing Act, that does actually feature as a condition, condition 11 in uh, uh, Annex 2 of the premises licence, which is uh, uh, Appendix B, and talks about primary use of the premises. Um, and I'm sure that's something that Mr Jandu uh, can uh, elaborate on, and perhaps Ms Cader also has comments about that, given it is a licensing condition. Uh, right. Uh, th thanks for allowing me to speak, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, so, just I'm just trying to unravel this. I've been looking at section 176 <laughs> while while we were talking and um it looks at that um probably aimed at sort of motorway service stations and so forth as far as i can tell um but uh, um i'm just trying to see condition which condition number i'm going through the conditions here which condition steve uh Apologies. Uh, it's um, condition 11 uh, in Annex 2 of the premises licence. The premises licence appears at Appendix B. Oh, this I've is got, where I've, the, I've this got is it where as, the data comes in. Then. That's correct. License holder shall monitor the primary use of the primary use. transaction data demonstrates that the premises are excluded premises pursuant to Section 176 of the Licensing Act. The sale of alcohol shall cease until such time as the data of the premises are not so excluded. So, ah, right. Such data we maintain a six monthly basis shall be available in request to the police and the licensing authority. Okay. So if we look at then at section 176, um, Yeah, it's a bit difficult to. In Chair, I, I could probably advise during deliberation, but yes. Ms. Kader may, yeah. not, may, be, may be able to confer yeah. compliance with Condition 11. It's really about the ratio of petrol sales to other sales. Okay. I see. And where where is that laid out in the Act, Camelgit, Mr. Jando? Where, where, where within section one seven six is that laid out? Uh, I'll have it's section two B. Yeah, section two B. Yeah. Premises used primarily as a garage or which form part of the premises which are prom and four C. Yeah. So how? I mean, this is quite. It's quite very pertinent, isn't it? How how would we determine whether something is used principally? So if it's used principally as a petrol station or diesel station, uh, then they shouldn't sell alcohol. But if it's principally used as a off a convenience yeah, moment, store, it, it can sell alcohol. It, is that there, right? There's, there's no information from the police or the licensing authority in respect condition 11 that there's no non-compliance uh, and Ms Kader can confirm um, how it's been monitored uh, presently if that may be a way forward but um, you need to just consider um, the variation uh, in principle. Yeah okay well I think there's something we clearly do need to come back to um, because presumably there are uh, garages up and down the country that sell alcohol uh, so in their convenience stores so uh, clearly it's quite a well-trodden uh, path. Um, Chair, Chair, there's no representation from the police or the licensing authority who are meant, meant to be monitoring that condition that there's non-compliance so you can work on that basis. Okay well before I bring in I will bring you in uh, Sabrina 
uh, on this point. Um, but clearly, you must have some uh, experience and expertise on it. Um, but uh, are there any other questions on other matters uh, from <laughs> my uh, Councillor Greenwell? Yes, sir. can you hear me now? We can, yes, carry on. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Question I think to I Finch. just want, I wanted to clarify um, uh, a question that was made before. It was about the breakdown. Was, um, am I right in thinking that the breakdown of the football is 50% people on foot and 50% cars using the uh, service through the uh, through the night at the moment for food, but for snacks. I, I think I it. I, I think it was a general fifty fifty. Not any particular time of the day. The, the 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 customers that come to the store, half of them come on foot, half of them come by car. It's not it's not necessarily a, a particular time of the day. It's not during the night time. It's just that's that's sort of the the demographic we get. But do we know? the breakdown of the nighttime users who are using the snacks, are they 50% on foot on 50%? How does that work out? Trish, I'm not sure if we, can, if we can answer that, can we? If we do we know how whether people no, tend to come? I'm not sure to stay the night, I'm afraid. No. Um, <laughs> Regardless, I think regardless of whether they come by, by vehicle or on foot, they're, they're all between the hours of midnight and 6am. It's all through that night hatch, though. And again, going back to the Uber drivers, because, you know, if you're going to sell alcohol through the night as well, there's going to be an increase in Uber drivers, surely. Um, I don't, Trisha, yeah, I don't know if yeah. we, we experience that elsewhere. Um in terms of increased Uber drivers? Um, it hasn't increased substantially, no, at other sites where we've put Uber drivers in. Through the night, though, with alcohol? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Chair. you uh, Thank you, Councillor Greenwell. Um, Councillor McGarkey, um, uh, do you have any questions? No, okay. No, lovely. Uh, so uh, really the question, uh, Pat, were to, we're meant to be questioning Mr. Pynchon at the moment, not that oh. Sabrina answered that question. Oh. Uh, just ask, he's got your hand up, Mr. Pynchon. Do you have anything to add uh, to those questions? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Gardner, I just wanted to come back on the steer with regards to um, uh, your question about how the determinations are made uh, with regards to A, the premises usage and the financial um, uh, data that should be um, uh, presented to yourselves. Um, and also a correction to Mr. Jantu that it's actually the licensing authority that are responsible for the um, uh, requesting of that financial data for the primary use of the garage, not the police. Um, the High Court case uh, of Merco versus Bristol City Council in 2010 um, provides uh, guidance to you with regards to the primary use issue um, and in fact from that it's also commented uh, on there that trading figures are used to determine the issue of primary yeah. use under section seven, uh, 176 um, as determined in Green versus Justices for Inner London um, and um, Sabrina Cader will I'm sure be familiar with those two cases. Um, also if I may point out paragraph 10.4 of the um, Royal Borough Greenwich's licensing policy uh, which says that um, or, or 10.3 and 10.4, that applicants will cooperate with requests for this data and uh, to demonstrate the primary use of the pr uh, premises within Appendix A. And then uh, in Appendix A, paragraph 68, uh, the premises license holder will monitor its primary use through a methodology and collection of monthly data, where this data shows that the primary use of the premises is that of a garage. At least six months of data will be retained. So I expect Ms. Kader to present that sort of evidence. 
Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Robert, um, for uh, pinpointing uh, those parts of licensing policy. The two, um, the two cases you cited, I wrote down one, because obviously I want to look these up, Burko versus Bristol City Council 2010. What was the other case that you cited, Mr. Pynchon? It's, uh, uh, it's actually within that case, uh, if you look it up, uh, the full title is Merco versus Bristol, uh, Bristol City Council. Merco, right. Yeah, Merco, 2010, uh, England and Wales High Court, that's EWHC uh, 1992 admin. And they state within that uh, uh, case report in paragraph 33, Green versus Justices for Inner London. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I think at this point, if there are no further questions, I would just like, you know, to be fair, to give uh, Sabrina an opportunity to come back on the issues that have been raised, particularly in relation to the Section 176, the exemption and the requirement for data in in both in statute and in uh, our policy, um, particularly with relevance to 11.7, where it's up to you to demonstrate the grant of VH formula. So there, are, so there are issues about section 176, and then there are issues around 11.7 that you've got to demonstrate the grant of variation involved will not add to the cumulative impact experienced. So the issues about whether it's a garage or a, whether it's a convenience store and the data um, that's necessary, and we've, as, as it's been pointed out, we don't have, well, I've not seen any data other than what we've heard about 50-50. Um, and, um, and, and I'm sure you must have dealt with this uh, before, you must be familiar with these, um, with these cases as well that Mr. Pynchon cited. So would you like to respond to that, please? Thank you, Councillor. Yes. Um, so I just, I've got to go back a bit, unfortunately. So under the old licensing regime, under the 64 Licensing Act 1964, um, there was, and because of the times and garages not being, you know, the garages today not being what they were um, back then, the law said that if you wanted to sell alcohol from a garage, you had to produce data up front in order to secure a licence. They, the, the government changed that under the 2003 Act. And what they say in 176 of the Licensing Act 2003 is that premises may not sell alcohol if it's primarily used as a garage. Now, this the, the, this, the store that we're talking about here is licensed, has been for the last five years. What, the, what Section 176 does, it puts the onus on us as license holders to ensure that we have data that shows that we're not primarily that, that, it, that it is primarily used as a garage. If at any point that data doesn't support our case, we are to stop selling alcohol. The condition that you've got that you see on the license allows the licensing authority and the police to come into these premises and say to us, show me your data. We and the license holder and the applicant regularly looks at that data and has that data available. It isn't a precondition of a new license application or a, um, a variation application for us to produce that data to, to, to you as the licensing authority or as the licensing committee. You can come along, Mr. Cox can come along and ask for that yesterday or tomorrow. It's not, it, the, the obligation is an ongoing obligation on us. Under the old act, you had to prove it. And once you proved it in that snapshot, that was it. Here, it is an ongoing for the whole of the license. We have to prove it. So that data that we look at, we monitor. If you have, if there's any doubt over that, you're always welcome to come and look at it. Now that's in section 176. This license goes further because you've, we've actually got a condition on it. And if we refuse to provide that data, then we, then we, um, you, we, you can stop us from selling alcohol. So it, it, I think it's wrong to say that that data must have been produced as a pre precondition to this application or must be produced to date. It doesn't need to be. It's something we monitor. If you have doubt, you can come to us and ask us for it. But, you know, as I say the, the conditions there on the licence and we don't expect um, there to be any issues. The Trish has looked at the data. We look at the footfall. We look at the difference between shop and fuel and we, we are satisfied. Um, in terms of paragraph 11.7 of your policy, what that says is 
is the effect of the cumulative impact policy is that the Royal Borough will refuse applications for new premises licences or certificates or a material variation to an existing licence whenever it receives relevant representations unless an applicant can demonstrate that it will, won't will add to the cumulative impact experience. Now, as I, we, I, I, I've said it a few times, we haven't had any objections from the responsible authorities and we would have expected to receive that within a CIZ. We've seen it before um, and we'll see it again. We haven't had that here. And it, the, the, the policy is about cumulative impact. There is nothing around these premises. There is, we're not adding a problem to this particular area because there are any, aren't any other licensed premises, as you saw from the um, slideshow. There's nothing to the left, nothing to the right in terms of commercial units. It's residential, there's a school and there's a police station. So in terms of adding to that cumulative impact, we're not doing that. And there's no evidence before you to show that we are doing that. Um, the evidence ordinarily comes from responsible authorities or the residents. And as I say, Mr. Pynchon hasn't been able to show you anything the tributes and he acknowledges that it, just, it isn't necessarily about this particular premises it's about the problem in the area um, and the only other thing I'd say is obviously there Mr Pinch talks about incidences in the area and um, that happened in the West End last Friday night no one knows what that was about we don't know whether that was alcohol related or anything to do with the licensable activity so I think it's wrong to take that into consideration when you're considering this application. Okay thank you um, very much um, for, for putting that uh um expert opinion over i think and unless my colleagues have any other points uh we're well uh past time now uh so we will um uh to move to a conclusion uh that's been very uh very in insightful um so if there are no uh further questions this Oh, Mr. Pynchon, I think, I think we probably, it's, well, we can have a discussion, it says, we can have, we are in our discussion, so I suppose we are in that stage of having a discussion before we conclude, so I will allow you one more shot, Mr. Pynchon, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just on a, a, a point of note, um, uh, of, uh, page 37, with regards to the licensing officer's report, um, he states within that um, about the application being correctly advertised. Uh, just, I want to just um, confirm his procedure. Um, he, uh, Mr. Cox states that there was advertising in the local press. And this goes with regards to um, the number of representations obviously being lacking here. Um, I couldn't find in the public realm any advertisement made by either uh, the applicant or uh, notification by the local authority in the local press. Can I? Can you just confirm that? Yes, I can confirm it. It was in the twenty uh, second of March edition of the South London Press, which circulates in the area, which is Thank the you. criteria required under the Licensing Act. Thank you. I also had occasion because I was visiting other premises in the area to pass the service station on a number of occasions, and I did cast an eye out and noticed that the blue notices remained intact throughout the whole of the 28 days. That's aside from me making a specific visit to check they were properly displayed and in a manner where uh, at least one of the notices could be seen by any passerby at any time of the day or night. So all those criteria have been properly met. Thank you. I'm sure we've met the legal criteria. Whether the South London Press is, is, is widely available within the borough, I think, is entirely another matter. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It's, a, it's, it's regularly available. In number. Other, uh, otherwise, you wouldn't accept those papers if, uh, uh, okay. if it was offered. OK, thank you very much uh, for that You're uh, point, Mr Pincham, and uh, for the response, uh, Mr Cox. So uh, that um, uh, brings us to the conclusion of the hearing. Uh, we will now deliberate in, in private after we've heard um, um, and uh, the full decision notice will be sent out uh, within five working days. Is that, um, is, is, is that okay? Uh, so thank you very much for your participation and time today. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, thank you, uh, Robert. And uh, thank you, Steve. And uh, we You're will welcome. meet with our legal representative 
uh, in a few minutes to uh, deliberate and reach a conclusion. Thank you Thank very you much. Councillors. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Bye. <clears throat>